I've just completed the installation of SharePoint 2013 to the point where I'm in the central administration and ready to begin the farm configuration wizard. Before I go any further, I want to optimize SQL Server for SharePoint. Let's go into our management studio, click Start, All Programs, SQL Server 2012 or your respective version, and SQL Server Management Studio. I have not configured the account I'm logged in as as a sysadmin, so I'm going to use my SA account. Let's begin with server level settings by right clicking the server and selecting properties. Under general settings, I want to note that if this was a dedicated instance of SQL Server, we would have installed it with Latin 1 general CIASKSWS. This is the required collation for SharePoint. Let's move to memory. Under memory, we're interested in the maximum server memory. We want to set this to 1 or 2 gigabytes less than the physical memory of the host. However, since this is a single server installation where SharePoint shares the server with SQL Server, I'm going to set it to about 50%. For this tutorial, that's 4 gigabytes. Next, let's go to database settings. Let's first note that the database files and the log files are on the C drive. It is recommended to move database and log files to RAID 5 or RAID 10 for redundancy and performance. If a RAID is not an option, it should at least separate your data and transaction log files to separate physical hard drives for redundancy and to increase I.O. performance. Let's move on to our databases. You may notice we have two databases already for SharePoint. First one is SharePoint config, which you may recognize from the installation. The next one is the admin content, which is the content database for the central administration. Let's begin with the SharePoint config database. Right click and select properties. Let's first point out the collation is Latin 1 General CIAS KSWS, which SharePoint automatically sets. Now let's go to files. Here we're interested in the auto growth max size. Let's take a look at the data file first. We're going to set this to a growth of 10% and limit it to 100 gigabytes. Now the log file, we're going to set it to 10% and we're also going to set it to 50% of the database file size. So we'll set this to 50 gigabytes. Let's look at the file location, and again notice that these are on the C drive. To optimize performance, these should be on separate hard disks to again minimize disk IOs. Next, let's go to Options. The recovery model we want set to full. When performing a database backup using SharePoint, the information in the transaction log files never gets purged. The SQL Server transaction log files get purged only if you perform an actual SQL Server backup log command. Therefore, after a SQL Server full backup, which contains the contents of the transaction log. A log backup can be performed and deleted in order to purge the transaction log and preventing it from becoming too large. Next we want to set auto shrink to false. Resizing is costly and causes disk fragmentation, so shrinking should only be done if growth is not a possibility or if the database usage is about 50%. Let's click OK and we'll move to our content database. Right click, select properties. Again, note the correlation. Select files. We're going to set our auto growth and max size to the same settings of 10% and limit it to 100 gigabytes. The log file will set to 10% and 50% of the database file, which is 50 gigabytes. We want to go to Options and ensure the recovery model is set to full and Auto Shrink is set to false. Click OK. If this instance of SQL Server is dedicated to SharePoint, you should modify the model database to improve the SharePoint performance. Although the two databases installed during the installation don't become very large, your content databases will probably need to be larger than the default settings on the model database. Let's open up System Databases, 
right click the model database and select properties. Let's first note under general settings that if we install this as a dedicated instance of SQL Server for SharePoint, the collation would be the required collation for SharePoint. Next, let's move to files. First, we're going to look at the initial file size. For the database files, we're going to set these to 50 megabytes. Now, for the auto growth and max size, we're going to set this to 25 to 50 percent of the initial file size. So I'm just going to do a percentage anyhow and do 25 percent. Microsoft recommends best practices to not let the content databases to exceed 200 gigabytes. So I'm going to set these to 200 gigabytes. As for the log file, the log file should be 25 to 50 percent of all the database files combined. So I'm going to set this to 25 megabytes. I'm going to set this to the same of 25 to 50 percent of its initial size, so I'm going to set it to 25 percent. And I'm also going to limit this to 200 gigabytes. Also notice, if we had adjusted the server level settings to change the default file locations, those adjustments would be reflected here. Next, let's go to Options. We want the recovery model set to full, and we want the auto shrink set to false. Let's click OK. Now we are finished with our primary steps for optimizing SQL Server for SharePoint. Our next step is to complete the farm configuration wizard. Thanks for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe below. Thank you.